we defined the conditional PMF of a random variable, discrete random variable, conditioned on an event. Okay, and how do we find the conditional PMF, conditioned on an event? We basically use the definition of conditional probability, and we said conditional uh, PMF is also a legitimate PMF. Okay, so here's an example. Uh, the last example from last time was uh, my friend Ali taking the driver's uh, motorcycle license test, right? Um, I hope that example is clear and I asked you to think about it on your own as well, so I hope you did. Here's another example. It's a canonical uh, detection problem. <clears throat> Consider an optical communications receiver that uses a photo detector that counts the number of photons received within a constant time unit. Okay. The sender conveys information to the receiver by transmitting or not transmitting photons. There is shot noise at the receiver and consequently even if nothing is transmitted during that time unit, there may be a positive count of photons. So if I send a signal the receiver will get a signal plus noise. If I don't send anything, again, the receiver may get something because of noise. Okay? If the sender transmits, which happens with probability one half, the number of photons counted, including the noise, is Poisson with parameter A plus N. Okay? If nothing is transmitted, the number of photons counted by the detector is again Poisson, with parameter n. Okay? Given that the detector counted k photons, what is the probability that a signal was actually sent? Okay? It's an important question. You can tell already that this is an important question that's relevant in an actual communication system. So how do we model this problem? There are two possible hypotheses when the receiver is making a decision. Okay. Either there's a signal, there's a signal, or there is no signal. Okay, what are the probabilities of these events prior to any information, prior to any measurement? Yes, please? One half. So with probability of one half, a signal is sent with probability one half, there is no signal. Now we need to define a random variable. Well, we're uh, supposed to count the number of photons. Okay, the detector is counting the number of photons. So the number of photons is discrete. Okay. And that could be our random variable. Okay? So let our random variable x be the number of photons detected by the receiver. Okay? Now we don't know, we're not given explicitly the PMF of x. What are we given? We are given the PMF of x under this condition and under this condition. Okay? So we are given the conditional PMF of X under the condition that there is a signal. Okay? And under the condition that there is no signal. When there is a signal, what is the PMF of X? Let's look here. Hmm. If the sender transmits, the number of photons counted, including the noise, is Poisson with parameter A plus N. Okay? So, do we now know the conditional PMF of X? All right, so in this case, X <coughs> is Poisson. How many um, parameters does the Poisson PMF have? One. What is that? That's also the mean of the Poisson distribution. Let me test this. Okay. X is Poisson with mean A plus N. 
A is a constant. N is also a constant. A is related to the strength of our signal, and N is related to the si uh, strength of the noise. Okay? So, all you have to know is X is Poisson with parameter A plus N if there's a signal. And if there's no signal, X is this time Poisson with parameter N. Just caused by the noise. Okay. So what do we do? What are we asked to do? Let me try this. Okay. Um, let's, let's write these in uh, the language of conditional PMFs. Um, F x given, hmm, let's name this event. Let this be s and let this be s complement. How about that? Signal or no signal. Okay? If x given s happened is, do you remember the Poisson? Lambda to the k, e to the minus lambda over k factor. So our lambda is a plus n. a plus n to the x, e to the minus a plus n divided by x factorial. Okay? And the value of x, um, x takes all integer values bigger than or equal to zero. Okay? Uh, what else? If x given s complement is known, what is that? Yeah. This time, the only thing changes is the parameter or the mean, n to the x, e to the minus n over x factorial. Again, x bigger than or equal to zero. Okay. So, now if I receive, if the receiver counts, for example, uh, 10 photons, okay? How do you know, how do you decide if this is due to signal or just due to noise? <coughs> I guess there would be a threshold, right? Above which you would infer that it's a signal. There's a signal present below which uh, there's, you would infer that there is no signal present. But that's not our topic right now. We will not ask this question. We will just compute the probability that there is a signal. Okay, the probability that there is a signal. Given that, I counted k photons. Okay, how do we do this? Let's write it down first. What is the, okay, so let's return to the question. What is the probability that a signal was sent given that the detector counted k photons? The probability that a signal was sent, so event A, uh, S happened, given that the detector count x photons, what is that event? Detector counting k photons. How do you express that? In terms of x. X is the number of photons counted by the detector, right? So that event is <coughs> x equals k. Given that x equals k, what is the probability of the event s? What, how do we do this? Base rule. So, base rule. Okay, let's try that. Hmm. I don't have this problem. Okay, so how do you use base rule here? The probability that x equals k given s, 
times the probability of s divided by the probability that x equals k. What does Bayes' rule give us? Bayes' rule turns the conditioning around, switches the uh, what's in the conditioning with what's not in the conditioning. So now we have the expression in terms of things that we know. Okay? We know this. We know this. What is it? One half. That's easy. We don't know this explicitly, but we can compute it using the conditional uh, PMF. Okay, so let's try to compute the probability that x equals k. How do we do this? Remember the total probability theorem? Right. This is the probability that x equals k, given that s happened, times the probability that s happened, plus the probability that x equals k, given s did not happen, times the probability that s did not happen. Okay? So let's use this over here to simplify this expression. Okay? So this is um, the probability that x equals k, given s, times one half divided by the probability that x equals k given s times one half plus the probability that x equals k given s complement times what is the probability of s complement? One half again. So the one halves cancel each other. Um, do we know the probability that x equals k given s? Mm -hmm. I used f here. I just realized that I used f here. And previously, in the previous lecture, we used p. This may have been confusing to you. Let's uh, switch to p for PMF. Later on, we'll use f's uh, when uh, we define probability density functions anyway. So, probability of x equals k given s. This is nothing but the conditional PMF of x given s, right? So let me move over to this side. The probability of s given x equals k is p x given s k given s divided by p x given s k given s uh, plus p x given s k given s complement. Okay. After all, I think this is something that's quite intuitive. Let's compute this. In fact, anyway, uh, let's write this as 1 over 1 plus um, p x given s complement k given s complement divided by p x given s k given s. Okay, I just divided all the terms by p x given s. Any question up to this point? Is this clear up to this point? Okay, now all we have to do is put in the expression uh, for px given s and px given x compl s complement, which we already wrote down here. So this is 1 over 1 plus, let's see, x given s complement is this one. We divide this one with this one, take the ratio of the two. When we take the ratio of the two, there will be k factorial. Maybe let's just write this. Let's write the whole thing. Okay. I'm going to need some space. 1 plus uh, n to the k e to the minus n over um, k factorial divided by 
a plus n to the k e to the minus a plus n divided by k factorial. As you see, the k factorials cancel. Okay. And we can do some more cancellation. e to the minus n and the other e to the minus n in the denominator, they cancel. So 1 over 1 plus n over a plus n to the k times e to the a. Okay, so we computed the probability that there is a signal given that the detector counted exactly k photons. This is big. I think we should congratulate ourselves on this because it's an achievement, okay? It's, it's, it's a useful thing to know, this probability. Now, let's see if this probability makes sense uh, by examining how it behaves with respect to k, for example. As k increases, this term does not, is not affected. Now, if n is less than a plus n, meaning my signal, when I send a signal, uh, the mean is increased by a, a is positive. So this is, this, this fraction is less than one. This fraction raised to the power k goes to zero as k increases, which means this probability goes to one. Does that make sense? Yes. If I received a large count of photons, it's very highly likely that this is caused by a signal. Okay? The probability. So let's write this. This probability goes, as k goes to infinity, to 1, provided a is bigger than 0. And A better be bigger than zero, right? I mean, the, the way I signal in this setting is send more photons <coughs> when I want to convey a signal. Okay, it's an on-off keying signaling mechanism. How about um, changing A, increasing A? Increasing A, how does it affect the probability? When A increases uh, for a fixed K, right, for a fixed K, this, this is going to zero. This is increasing, but this increase dominates because it's exponential. So this whole probability is decreasing. The probability is decreasing as the signal power grows for a fixed K which makes sense. Okay, why did I say signal power? Because in order to send a, you know, use a big A, I need to, you know, use more power uh, in an actual uh, system. Okay, because I'm sending a physical signal. Okay, what else? N with, re N, um, with respect to A, or let's just fix A and let n go to zero, okay? Let n go to zero, a is fixed. As n goes to zero, um, this fraction goes to zero, and the probability of detection again, probability of sig that there is a signal still again goes to one. On the other hand, as n goes to infinity, as n goes to infinity, this fraction goes to 1. Okay. So this whole, uh, hmm? what? Um, what happens as n goes to infinity? This fraction goes to 1. And the probability, is it decreasing? Decrease. Decreasing. It doesn't go to 0. It depends on A. Um, 
if n increases, let's just say this, if n increases while a decreases, or n over a increases, okay, what happens? The probability, uh, the probability that there's a signal given there are k photons is decreasing. Okay, uh, as noise is increasing, this is making uh, the detection performance poor. Okay. Okay. I'm not so, uh, I don't think this is the what increasing, right? Huh? If A is increasing, uh, if A is decreasing towards zero, this is going toward one. And if A, uh, again, make A go to zero, um, this probability is going to one. Hmm. Going to one half. Very nice. Going to one half. So A is the going down to zero, N is increasing, or N is fixed. Okay, right. Fix N, make A go, okay. Let's fix N, make A go to down to zero. The probability that there is a signal, given that I counted K photons, is going to one half, regardless of how many photons I counted. What does that mean? Very nice, you said that. Good. Okay, so um, the system, communication system is not working. Okay? Um, this, you know, signaling mechanism is not giving me any information um, because the probability that there's a signal is one half uh, to start with. <coughs> okay, so um, why is the system not working? because my signal power is too low with respect to noise. Okay, the interesting example. Think about this example. Any other questions? Yes, please. There are very different, um, uh, different criteria with respect to which we compute a decision rule, okay? Um, if you want to, for example, maximize, minimize the probability of error, you get one threshold. If you want to uh, minimize the posterior probability that there is a signal, ma I'm sorry, maximize posterior probability um, that there is a signal, then you, you reach another decision rule. Uh, that part depends up to the criterion. And um, how, what is the risk of making an error with respect to um, the benefit of making a correct decision determines that criteria, okay? That's a topic for uh, EE535, okay? Detection and estimation theory. Okay, so I think we should move on. Um, the next topic is conditioning one random variable upon another, okay? Not much is different. Um, when you condition one random variable on another, you use essentially the same techniques. Um, let's see. As we did here, okay? The conditional PMF of X conditioned on y. px given y is defined as the probability that x equals x given y equals y. Okay? So let's show that px given y is the ratio of the joint PMF by the marginal of y. Where do you think this is following from? just the definition of conditional probability, right? So, um, 
Shall we show this? <coughs> Do you think we should show this? Or is it very simple? Let's quickly write down what that says and uh, apply the definition of conditional probability. Uh, so P, P, X given Y, X given Y, is the probability that X equals X given Y equals Y. Use the definition of conditional probability. This is the probability that x is x, while y is y, divided by the probability that y is y. But this here is known as the joint PMF. And this is known as the marginal PMF. Okay. Well, also, that gives us a method to compute Wow, that's really <laughs> not straight. Okay. Okay. So that gives us a, also a way to compute the conditional PMF. Let's say, see an example on that. The example is the following. The joint PMF of two random variables x and y that share the same range of values is given by this 1 over 7 when x and y are in this region. Okay, so we have oops, we have x and y. They live in the positive integers, 0, 1, 2, 3, non-negative integers. And their sum is restricted to between 1 and 3, 3 inclusive, OK? So 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3. And how many points that we, do we have? Four by four, right? Sixteen points. How many of them are uh, have a positive probability mass? Hmm? You? Do we have a positive probability mass at one one? Yes. Two zero. Zero two. Yes. Uh, three zero. Yes. 2, 1, yes, <coughs> 1, 2, yes, 3, 0, or uh, 0, 3, yes. So that's it, four values, okay? And it makes sense that the PMF is 1 over 7 because it has to sum to 1, okay? So let's write the PMF value, 1 over 7, 1 over 7, 1 over 7, Okay, the, way, the masses of all of these points are the same. Now, find Px given y. Px, x given y. x given, well, we need to provide a value for y. First of all, let y be 3. When y is 3, what happens to x? When y is 3, x, x has no choice. Okay, because y is 3, there is only one probability mass for y equals 3, and that's x equals 0. Okay, so Px of 0 is 1 if um, x is um, 0 and 0 otherwise. Okay, it's obvious by inspection from the 
joint PMF. But we can also apply this. Let's apply this to test it. Okay. So what are we supposed to do? Uh, Px given y, x given 3 is Pxy x comma 3 divided by Py of 3. Oh, we need the marginal of y at 3. Hmm, how do we, yes please. So, now, look here, when y is 3, there is only one possibility for x. x has to be 0. So the probability that x is 0 is 1. So the PMF at x equals 0 is 1. Okay? But here's an alternative way of deriving that using the definition of conditional PMFs. Joint divided by marginal. We need the marginal of y at 3. How do we find that? Py of 3 is found by summing the joint over x. Summation Pxy, xy over all x when y is equal to 3, right? But how many terms are there in the summation? One term, because when y is a 3, x can only be 0. So uh, that is 1 over 7. Plug in here, Pxy x3 is, hmm, depends on x. When x is equal to 0, Pxy x3 is 1 over 7. And in the on the denominator, we have 1 over 7 as well. So we get 1. If x is different from 0, in the numerator we have 0, in the denominator we have 1 over 7, and the result is 0. Okay? So we answered this question two ways. Number one, by inspection. Number two, by actually writing the definition of conditional PMF and computing it. I would like you to pay a lot of attention to this and I want everyone to understand this. Okay, let's not move on before everybody's okay with this. Okay, so let me know um, if anything is unclear. I think the more you ask questions, the better it will be for everyone. For example, how did we get Py of 3? Hmm? Is that clear? Py of 3. Why did we use x here and 3 here? <laughs> I'm trying to make up questions. Hmm? Because I'm trying to compute this function of x, x. Px given y is a function of x. y is given to be 3. Okay, no questions? Then I'll ask you a question. Let me pick a random person, you. Okay. So um, how would you um, do P y given x when x is three. Very nice. It's a symmetric situation, right? <coughs> in this case, in, 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 it doesn't have to be symmetric. By the way, in all PMFs, in this case, it happens to be symmetric. Uh, so that that's easy. Let's write that down. P y given x y given x equals 3 is um, what specifically you tell me uh-huh 
one, yes. And if y is not zero, it's zero. Okay, let's plot this, p y given x, y given three. Just this. Similarly, here's um, p x given y, x given three. Just one probability mass at the origin. Now let's quickly do another one. Let, uh, let y be 2. Okay, let y be 2. Um, so let's compute p x given y, x given y equals 2. How do we do this? y equals 2 is this slice through the PMF, y equals 2. When y is 2, look at the slice, how many values does x take? Two values. Are they equally probable? Yes. So by inspection, by inspection, I can just write, I can just draw this PMF. Sometimes sketching is easier than writing. P um, x given y, x given 2. That x takes values at 0 and 1 equally probably. Since they're equally probable, what do they have to be? The masses? 1 half, 1 half. Easy, right? Or, in other words, you could compute py of Two, the probability that y is 2, which is 1 over 7 plus 1 over 7, 2 over 7, and divide pxy, which is 1 half, 1 over 7, by 2 over 7. It gives you 1 half. Okay? So, again, py given x, y given x equals 2, by symmetry, is the same. P y given x, y given 2, by symmetry, again, it's the same thing. One more, uh, when y is 1, uh, let me erase this part. Y, okay, uh, P x given y, x given y equals 1. Which slice is that? It's this slice. Look at that, this slice. What do you see? X is either 1 or 2. So, x is either 1 or 2, <coughs> equally probably 1 half, 1 half. Again, let's do this the long way. Um, let's do this the long way. Um, p x given y, x given uh, 1 is p x y x1 divided by py of 1. What is py of 1? The probability that y is 1. This plus this. So what is pxy? It's 1 over 7 if x is 1 or 2 and py of 1 is 2 over 7 and 0 otherwise. Okay. Does everybody get the idea? Yes, please. This one? Okay. It's just given, I'm just using the probability masses given here. Because this is the joint PMF evaluated at the value x and uh, when x is x and y is 1. So, when x is 1 and y is 1, it's 1 over 7. 
when x is 2 and y is 1, it's 1 over 7. Because I'm doing this for every value of x. Okay? Just, you know, if you keep track of what this is a function of, which is x, it will all make sense. Okay? Please try not to memorize anything. Okay? In probability, that would be disastrous. You just have to keep in your mind, uh, understand what it means when you write this. When you write this, this means, what is the probability that the random variable x takes the value small x, given that y is 1? Then you know how a function works. You know the definitions. So everything will follow. Okay. Do we have any minutes left? Any other questions? Okay. Well, how about let's just verbally answer the last one. What is the conditional PMF of x given y equals uh, 0? <coughs> huh? 1 half, 1 half, at which values? Two and three. Very nice. Okay. That's... Uh, if there's still that, you know, something that's still not making sense, please go back and think about it later on. Okay? And you can ask questions later on as well. Let's move on. <coughs> so, directly from the definition, uh, which is, I don't have it here, but if you look at this expression, um, PXY, the joint PMF, can be found by multiplying the marginal and the conditional, obviously, by doing, um, like if you cross multiply like this here, PY times PX <coughs> given Y equals PXY. Okay. Similarly, the marginal is Py of y times px given y. Okay. Here's an example. <clears throat> a die is tossed and a number on the face is denoted by x. A fair coin is tossed x times and a total number of heads is recorded as y. Okay. It's a little involved. There's a die and a coin. Okay, in the same example, we throw the die, it gives us a number x, x is between 1 and 6, equally likely. And then we take the coin and toss it x times. So it's a two-stage experiment. Uh, first, you take the die and um, throw the die it gives us x. x is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. And then the coin uh, x times. Coin is tossed x times. Hmm? Did I get the example right? And then there's a y. What is y? y is the number of heads on the coin, on the x coin tosses. So what is the range for y? y can be as small as 0, of course, as big as 6. I toss 6 times at most, and at most all of them can be heads, so, you know. y lives between 0 and 6, x lives between 1 and 6, interesting. Okay, we are supposed to find P Y given X, Y given X. Given that the die outcome is equal to X, what 
is the PMF of the number of heads that we get. It's not that hard. Okay. What is this? You know, you already know this experiment. When the number of coin tosses is given, <coughs> the count of the number of successes is binomial. Okay? So what is this? And so x is fixed. What is the probability that the number of successes or the number of heads is y? Hmm? Remember n choose k, p to the k, 1 minus p to the n minus k. What is n here? n here is x. k is y. So x choose y, right? p to the k, which is p to the y. What is p? p is the probability of success or p is the probability of getting heads. That is one half. One half to the y, one half to the x minus y, so it makes one half to the x. Okay? Done. Any questions? This was part A. It's not done. Okay? Why is it not done? Because I have not specified anything about x and y. Just as it stands, it doesn't tell me what this is. So I have to specify the range of x and range for y. What is the range of y in terms of x? y is between 0 and x, and x is between 1 and 6. Now, now it's complete. Now it's a legitimate PMF or conditional PMF. Let's also compute PY of Y before giving a break. Yes, please. Which one? X choose Y? I toss the coin X times. When you toss the coin uh, N times, what is the probability that there are k successes. n choose k, p to the k, 1 minus p to the n minus k. So here, the number of tosses is n is x, and k is y. OK? Um, there are x choose y ways of choosing y locations out of x total locations. Y locations for the successes. Okay. Let's do part B real quick. PY of Y. PY of Y. How do we do this? Total probability theorem. PY of Y can be found by using the total probability theorem. PY given X, Y given X times the probability that X is X px of x. In other words, remember what is this? When you multiply py given x and px of x, this is nothing but pxy xy. And I'm summing this over all x. That's how I find the marginal of y. Okay, so it's, everything is consistent. We're coming back to the same place. We're going in circles. And that's good. Okay, there are not a lot of things that you have to keep in mind. This is not a course about remembering expressions. This is just a course about knowing the definitions of a few things and then applying um, logical facts. Okay, so, um, so, okay, all we have to do is then, PY given X we already know, X choose Y, one half to the X. And px of x, what is that? 1 over 6 for all values of x. What is the range of x? x goes from 1 to 6. And this is valid for y between 0 and 6. Think about this. 
and let's give a short break.